Today I thought that we would work on some equivalent resistance problems by hand, very similar to how you would do if you were expected um, for an exam or for um, the kinds of problems that teachers um, prescribe or give for uh, their classes. So we're going to do this by hand. This is what you'd be expected to do on a test. So anyway, we have equivalent resistance. So we are looking for, if we had a, some kind of load here, okay, maybe some kind of like plus or minus here, and you have to excuse my... Uh, poor drawing skills. I'm using a tablet for the first time here, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit of a learning experience. But anyhow, if I have some sort of power across this, uh, I'm going to see some current, and I might be interested in how much this load is going to be with respect to the power source before I go about doing that. Because if this is too low, if the load is too low, I may draw way more current. Uh, through the load than I had expected to, um, which could blow out some things. So anyway, um, these kinds of calculations are useful, um, and then we'll simulate at the end when uh, we want to check our work. So typically you start, um, this is called like the look back resistance, so we're looking from the point A to B, and uh, but where we start the calculations more along the lines of from whatever is easiest to do first. So these are obviously in series. Uh, so we're going to create a resistance, and uh, before we do that, sometimes it is helpful to label these as R1, R2, R3, and R4, and R5. So we're giving them reference designators, and we're doing some indexing. The, the number here is the index that's going to increment as we go through this. Now our equivalent resistors that are kind of made up, uh, we might want to use some type of indexing in terms of A. So uh, like ABC. So I'm going to put R sub A, and that is going to be the para, the series com combination between R5 and R6. So that's going to be R5 plus R6, which is uh, equal to 1K uh, plus 1K, which is equal to 2K. And um, this is a, an old habit for mine to put the uh, unit in the superscript. Um, you can you can put the K there, but oftentimes I don't want this um, I want the units to kind of be separate from the pure number So this is just an engineering habit that uh, my professor did and uh, I've kind of kept it because it's useful um, to, For what I like to do and it's a little bit annoying to write the ohm symbol every single time Although you can do it um, if you're typing this up then make sure that you put the ohm symbol there uh, It just looks better in your technical uh, reports to your manager and to your colleagues though um, somewhat respect you a little bit more for, for doing that because it looks a little bit more professional. So that's what you're aiming at is to be as professional as possible. So we have RA. Now we can redraw the circuit again. So um, we can, you know, I, I have this in, in a digital format, but like let's say, you know, I want to remove all of this stuff and um, um, yeah, I want to replace it with, you know, R, R sub A. So here we go. We, re we erase all of this stuff. And we put our resistor, which is 2K, and its name is RA. Okay, so our, our circuit got a little bit simpler. And we look at it again, and we see that R4 and RA are in parallel. So we're going to call this RB, the equivalent resistance between that, and that's going to be R4 in parallel with RA. Now, whether you choose to use double slash or double pipe key is really up to you, but the parallel combination is R4 times RA divided by R4 plus RA. And since these are the same, it just so happens that this, this particular problem works out where these are the same, we know that a parallel combination of an equal resistance pathway is just going to be half of the total resistance. Uh, if these numbers were different, you would have to follow this formula, but we can use the shorthand formula, which means that this is going to be RA over 2, or it would be R4 over 2, like that. Um, it, we would look at it here, 2K times 2K is 4K. We'd put like a little maybe 4K over here, and then this is going to be 2K plus 2K um, here, and that is 4K, right? So it's 4K divided by 4K, or... You can say 2K divided by 2. It, it, there's all sorts of ways of, of looking at these kinds of problems, but the result is that it's going to be four kilo, or 1 kilo ohm resistance. Okay, so then now we can erase again. Um, now, if you're doing this on a test of some kind, um, you're not going to be able to erase. It would be better to redraw the circuit each time. Um, you know, so I can, I can do that, or, you know, I can take my mouse here. And it's 
probably easier to do it that way. Okay, so then now I'm gonna write the resistance here. I'm gonna call this RB and it is 1K. All right, so now we're back to here. We have, um, oh, this is R3, uh, R3 plus um, RB here, and that's gonna be RC. So RC is gonna be equal to R3 plus RB, which is equal to 1K plus 1K, which is equal to 2K. Great, all right, there you go. So now we delete this section again and we're going to put the resistor right here. And this is 2K, and this is called RC. And so we're just kind of working our way. And again, this problem just happens to work out this way, where we have things that are nice, where, where the numbers work out well. You know, RD is gonna be equal to R2 in parallel with RC, which is equal to R2 times RC divided by R2 plus RC, you know, which is the same as, as RC over 2, or it's the same as R, what is this, 2? No, yeah, okay, over 2, which is going to be equal to R1K ohm again. Okay, great. Let's delete that. And we have this last resistance here, and that's going to be Rd, and this is equal to 1k ohm. Okay, now we just have one more operation to do, and that's to sum the series. So it's going to be R, we well, yeah, see the E, we're in E now, as far as our indexing there, and that's going to be Rd plus R1, which is equal to 1k plus 1k, and that's going to be equal to 2 kilo ohm. And so that's the final final resistance, um, the overall equivalent resistance of the entire system for this particular problem. A lot of these these kinds of like educational or academic problems are very sterilized. And what I mean by that is that they're nice, they're put in nice forms. They they're easy to check and grade if you're a teacher, uh, because if you're if you're a teacher, you don't want to really spend all of your time in grading. You would rather spend it in teaching and then maybe research or whatever else you do. But um, you know, we have all we have all of these um, <clears throat> all this equation list here, and uh, if I'm a teacher, I don't really want to do a lot of work, right? So I just want to know if you know the concepts and that you can follow the process. And these problems are like that in the real world, or at least in real problems. Uh, you're not going to get just networks of resistances. There's going to be some sort of capacitance and inductance that's going to really mess up these equations for you because they're not going to be just straight resistance. They're going to have reactance components. So. RE is 2K. Now, if we're going to check this simulation-wise, I have this here. And in order to do this kind of simulation, you need some type of source. So, I don't know. We'll choose 5 volts and see what happens. All right. 5 volts here. And we're going to connect it to our network. And we're going to wire it up here. So, the, the voltage here is 5 volts. And then whatever current goes through here into the network and out of the network. You can look at the input current or the output current on the return line, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we should see some type of current and from the voltage and current, we can calculate the resistance. This is an easier way to, uh, to do this kind of a thing. Uh, so we're gonna run the simulation here and uh, we, might do, we might do something like this. We might do uh, the, the voltage across A here and the voltage A minus the voltage of B, which is going to be ground anyway, that's fine. And then we might look at the uh, voltage, let's see, the um, voltage of A divided by the current. Uh, now, this might be a little bit more difficult to do. We're just going to leave that out. Yeah, we're just going to leave that out. And this one probably, we just really need to know that. It doesn't really matter how long. This is a DC calculation. So the voltage is 5 volts. We knew that, right? But we're going to look at the current here. So the overall current coming in and coming out, it's 2.5 milliamps of current. Um, so we can expect that uh, the voltage here is 5 volts divided by 2.5 uh, milliamps of current. 
uh, is going to give us uh, that resistance. So we have 5 divided by 2.5 is 2, and then because the milli is on the denominator side, it's going to end up being a k. So our resistance is going to be um, it's going to be 2k. And we calculated that. We did all the work, right? And 2k there. So if you're doing a simulation, you can just look at it like that. I'm sure there's another feature that allows you to look at just the transfer function of, and find the resistance, but that's pretty easy to do as far as a uh, DC simulation goes. Uh, the other way you can look at it is, you know, if you want, if you didn't want to look at this number, 2.5 milliamps, you would look through all of the currents and you would aggregate them. So 625, 625 micro, you'd add them, that's 1.25 milli, and then 1.25 milli together, you get the 2.5. So, you know, current doesn't exit our circuit unless there's magnetics involved. Uh, you know, we follow Kirchhoff's laws unless there's magnetics. So uh, that's, how, that's how that works. So hopefully those, uh, that problem solving session was helpful to you. I'll see you next time.